What is up everyone? Welcome back to our channel. I'm Carla, and in this week's tutorial we are going to be making anemone flowers out of sugar. We are going to get started with the tutorial right now. going to start off with making the center and I'm using black gum paste for this. You want to knead the paste a little bit until it's smooth and pliable. Roll it into a ball between your palms. Grab some 18 or 20 gauge floral wire. Use your needle nose pliers to bend a hook in the end. Dip it into some water or edible glue. Wipe off the excess on your hand and then insert it into the paste and just make sure the paste is well attached to the wire at the base. This is an optional step but I'm using a blade tool just to divide off a separate bulbous section of the center because a lot of anemones in nature don't have centers that are completely round or completely symmetrical. So this step just adds a little bit of realism to your finished flower. We're going to move on to making the petals. I'm using white gum paste for this and my trusty cell board. You'll want to roll your paste into a little sausage and then press it into the grooves on your cell board. I use a little cornstarch to prevent my rolling pin from sticking to the paste. And you can start with short strokes with your rolling pin just to make sure the paste doesn't lift up too soon from the grooves and then gradually apply more pressure. I'm cutting out my petals here. You'll want to have 10 petals in total for each flower. I have two different size cutters here. That's just to create a little bit of variety. If you only have one size, that's fine. As you'll see, one cutter is just a little bit longer and thinner than the other one that I'm using. And I'm cutting out five petals at a time here and then putting them into my Ziploc bag just to prevent them from drying out. And the same with the gum paste that you're not using, just make sure it's kept away from the air. This is 24 gauge white floral wire that I'm cutting into quarter lengths and dipping the end into some water or edible glue and carefully threading it into the groove that was created by the cell board. Just using my thumb and my index finger to gauge where the wire is inside of the petal. And then your petal goes onto your foam pad and I'm using a really big ball tool here just to soften the petal. And I'm going to lay the petal into the concave section of my veiner and add the top section, give it a good press. This veiner creates a lot of lovely detail, as you can see here. And the petal now goes back onto the foam pad, and I am using a Dresden tool. This is the broad end of the Dresden tool. And I'm just dragging the Dresden tool inward from the outer edge of the petal to create a soft curve. And as you'll see here, it's pretty subtle. You can give your wire a little bend just between your index finger and thumb. And that way it doesn't poke out when you lay it into your bumpy foam into a curved shape. And again, Thread your wire carefully into your petal so it's about 40% of the way through the petal. Use your ball tool just to soften the petal. You're not aiming for radical ruffling or thinness here or stretching the petal too much. You mostly are just removing the blunt cut edge that the cutter has created. Vein your petal again. And in this case, I'm going to be using the Dresden tool to curl back one edge and then I'm flipping the petal over and curling back the other edge. And that is to 
create some variety among my petals so that they don't all end up looking like clones of each other, which will add to the beauty and the realism of your finished flower. This is gum glue, a little ball of black gum paste softened with some water until it's a kind of a sticky paint. I'm using Squire's Kitchen brand of edible pollen here in the poppy black color. You don't have to have this at hand. You can just dye some dry gelatin granules with some black petal dust to get the same effect. Paint your center with some gum glue until it's nice and sticky and then dunk it in the pollen. Tap off the excess and then you'll end up with a lovely center with lots of pollen on it. You'll want to let this dry, ideally overnight. I'm now preparing my stamens. These are commercial stamens. I've painted the ends black with some black gel color and I'm using some lengths of white floral tape here to attach my stamens to the centers. This bit is a little fiddly in that I'm just evening out the stamens to make sure that there are no odd ones that are too short or too tall in each bundle. And I'm working with one bundle at a time to make this a little more manageable. And you're just wrapping the base of the stamens tightly onto the wire. And as you'll see here, the pollen is pretty much raining down on my workstation because I was a bit impatient while filming this video and I didn't let my centers dry. You can also, if you want to prevent the pollen from shedding, you can just spray your centers lightly with a little bit of confectioner's glaze. We're now going to make the leaves. I'm using green gum paste for this, which is a blend of Americolor avocado green and a little bit of leaf green and a drop of ivory or you can use chocolate brown just to mute the green color so it's not quite as neon. My particular anemone leaf cutter set comes with two different shapes. There's this very spiky, smaller, more detailed leaf. Um, anytime you're using cutters like this it's a good idea to rub your finger across the shape to get rid of any straggly bits of paste and make sure you have a nice clean cut. You can use your Dresden tool to remove complicated shapes like this from the cutter so that they don't get distorted if you try to pull them out of the cutter. The other leaf shape in my cutter set is quite a lot bigger. It looks a bit like a poppy leaf actually, even though it is indeed an anemone leaf shape. Again, I'm just making sure I get a clean cut by rubbing the shape with my fingers and as always, my cut petals, or leaves in this case, are going straight into a Ziploc bag to keep them from drying out too quickly. I'm using a rose leaf veiner to vein these, and I'm using 26 gauge green floral wire dipped into water or edible glue. You'll just want to make sure that the paste is well attached to the wire at the base of the leaf. I'm using a small and a medium sized ball tool just to soften the blunt cut edge of each leaf shape. I'm not trying to stretch the shape too much um, because the thinner it gets, the more fragile it tends to become, especially once it's dry. This leaf veiner is wonderful. It's one of my favorite leaf veiners of all time. And you don't need a botanically correct anemone leaf veiner for this kind of project. A good all-purpose rose leaf veiner like this one is great and it's a way of reducing all your expenses on fancy sugar flower gadgets and tools and just using what you have to create the look that you want. And you'll notice that as I'm uh, finishing each leaf and veining it, I'm just laying it along the edge of my foam pad so that it dries with a little bit of curve and a little bit of movement. You can leave your petals white, but I have chosen to add color to them here with some aubergine from Roll Chem, some crystal colors, lavender mist, and optional blackberry for a bit of shade. That's the lavender mist, that's the aubergine. And I'm using a makeup brush just to blend the two dust colors together. 
and apply it to my petal, concentrating mostly at the base and then fading the color out towards the edges of the petals. I'm using circular motions here because as you'll see, it really does a good job of accenting all the veins created by the veiner. I'm also dragging my brush along the edge of the petal to create a little bit of outline. This is quite subtle, but I think it looks really pretty. And the makeup brush is the perfect brush for dusting your flowers because it's very soft since it's designed to go on your face. And it also does a good job of holding on to the product. We're now going to add color to the leaves. So you'll want just a slightly darker green than the color of your paste. This will help add dimension to the leaves and also accentuate the veining that we created with our rose leaf veiner. I'm aiming for pretty full coverage um, across most of the surface of the leaf. And I am, as you can see here, using my fingers behind the leaf to support it as I dust to prevent unnecessary breakage. I'm using the same aubergine that we blended onto the petals themselves, just as an accent for the leaves, and that'll help the leaves and the flowers look cohesive. I'm just adding little bits of it here and there, mostly in the center vein, and then on the tips here and there. And when you're dusting these small spiky leaf shapes, just be careful and make sure you support them with your finger and be very gentle with your brush because they are definitely prone to breakage. Now we get to put everything together and I'm gonna use some dark green floral tape here, just stretching it out to activate the glue. I've got my center with all of the stamens taped around it. And the goal here is to attach your petals so that they are right up against the stamens. As you can see here, you'll be taping them on without creating too much of an air gap between the center and the petals. So you'll want to prepare your petals by just bending the wires down at 90 degrees. That'll make your assembly a little more efficient. And then attach your floral tape so you've got a free hand and you can bring in the petals one at a time and then just wrap them tightly. I tend to wrap with a quarter turn and then I bring in a new petal and tightly wrap that with a quarter turn and bring in my next one. So you will have made 10 petals for each flower. You'll see here that I'm using four to create the first layer and those four petals are just placed opposite each other. Once they're in place, I always like to tape down the length of the stem to lock in those petals and stop them from swinging around and moving around as we add subsequent petals in a new layer. So layer two will have six petals. Again, for efficiency, I tend to secure my tape and then I have a free hand that I can use to bring in my petals. Each petal of layer two will overlap or will at least cover a gap between the petals of layer one, as you see here. And I'm wrapping tightly with my tape, doing a quarter turn and then bringing in the new petal. And as you go, you'll wanna look at your flower from the front to make sure that you like the shape that you're creating by adding in petals. And I'm adding in petals just where they fit and where they look good and trying to keep them in the same, at the same height and making adjustments as I go, as you'll see there. In some cases, you may not use all the petals that you made, which is fine. Uh, you'll have a spare in case of any breakage. That's not a bad idea to have a spare. I happen to think that this flower needs all six petals for its outer layer, so I'm adding them all in. And I am completing the flower by taping all the way down the wire. And the length of the wire will depend on 
what you want to do with the flower and what kind of a plan you have for arranging the flower. We are going to be using some 24 gauge green wire here to strengthen our leaf clusters. And I'm taping these leaves together because in nature they grow right up the stem like that which really in an arrangement on a cake means that the leaves would be completely hidden. So instead of taping them to the flower, we're going to be just taping them into clusters of several leaves. And that way the leaves are independent from the flowers and they can be placed alongside or in between the flowers onto the cake as you see fit. So I'm taping three leaves together here, fairly close together. And I've also chosen to make a few clusters that just have two leaves in them. And once you've added the number of leaves that you want to have in the cluster, you can tape all the way down the wire and then play around with them to see which combinations of leaves and flowers look best for the particular cake you're working on. Check out the description box below for links to the supplies that we use to make this flower. And check out our video here, which is an overview of all the tools and supplies that are essential to your success in making sugar flowers. And that's a wrap on our sugar anemone tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel so that we can keep making more tutorials for you. The subscribe button is below this video, and if you click on the bell, you'll be notified as soon as we post a new video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you 